is an explanation of the plans now being laid to throw the United States into a third world war. It was made a short time ago before a large group in the congressional room of the Willard Hotel in Washington, D.C. Both the speech and the question and answer period later so electrified the audience that a group of patriots has transferred it to two long-playing records which you may buy to play for friends, clubs, and your church groups in your community. The speaker is Mr. Benjamin Friedman, noted authority on Zionism and all of its schemes. Mr. Friedman is a former Jew, and I mean a former Jew. He has fought the communist world conspiracy tooth and nail and stands today as a leading American patriot. We now take you to the speaker's platform to present Benjamin Friedman. What I'm going to tell you tonight is something that you have never been able to learn from any other source. And what I tell you now concerns not only you, but your children and the survival of this country and Christianity. I'm not here just to dish up a few facts to send up your blood pressure, but I'm here to tell you things that will help you preserve what you consider the most sacred thing in the world, the liberty and the freedom and the right to live as Christians where you have a little dignity and a little right to pursue the things that your conscience tells you are the right thing as Christians. Now, first of all, I'd like to tell you that on August 25th, 1960, that was shortly before election, Senator Kennedy, who is now the President of the United States, went to New York and delivered an address to the Zionist Organization of America. In that address, to reduce it to its briefest form, he stated that he would use the armed forces of the United States to preserve the existence of the regime set up in Palestine by the Zionists who are now in occupation of that area. In other words, Christian boys are going to be yanked out of their homes, away from their families, and sent abroad to fight in Palestine against the Christian and Muslim Arabs who merely want to return to their homes. And these Christian boys are going to be asked to shoot to kill these innocent people who only want to follow out 15 resolutions passed by the United Nations in the last 12 years, calling upon the Zionists to allow these people to return to their homes. Now, when the United States troops appear in the Middle East to fight with the Zionists, as their allies to prevent the return of these people who were evicted from their homes in the 1948 armed insurrection by the Zionists who were transplanted there from Eastern Europe. When that happened, the United States will trigger World War III. You say, when will that take place? The answer is, as soon as the difficulty between France and Algeria has been settled, that will take place. As soon as France and Algeria have settled their difficulties and the Arab world or the Muslim world has no more war on their hands with France, they are going to move these people back into their homes. And when they do that, and President Kennedy sends your son to fight over there to help the crooks hold on to what they stole from innocent men, women, and children, we will trigger World War III. And when that starts, you can be sure we cannot emerge from that war a victor. We are going to lose that war 
because there is not one nation in the world that will let one of their sons fight with us for such a cause. I know and speak to these ambassadors in Washington and at United Nations, and of the 99 nations there, I consulted with maybe 70 of them, and when we go to war in Palestine to help the thieves retain possession of what they have stolen from these innocent people, we're not going to have a man there to fight with us as our allies. And who will these people have supporting them, you ask? Well, four days after President Kennedy, or he was then Senator Kennedy, made that statement, on August 28, 1960, the Arab nations called a meeting in Lebanon, and there they decided to resurrect or reactivate the government of Palestine, which has been dormant, more or less, since the 1948 armed insurrection by the Zionists. Not along that, they ordered the creation of a Palestine army, and there are now drilling maybe a half a million soldiers in that area of the world to lead these people back to their homes. With them, they have as their allies all the nations of what is termed the Bandung Conference group. That includes the Soviet Union, and every Soviet Union satellite, it includes Red China, it includes every independent country in Asia and Africa, or 80% of the world's total population. 80% of the world's population, four out of five human beings on the face of the earth, will be our enemies at war with us. How long are they? Four out of five human beings, now on the face of this earth, but they are the non-Christian population of the world, and they are the non caucasian the non-white nations of the world. And that's what we say. And what is the reason? The reason is that here in the United States, the Zionists and their co-religionists have complete control of our government. For many reasons, too many and too complex to go in here at this time, I'll be glad to answer questions, however, to support that statement. The Zionists and their co-religionists rule this United States as though they were the absolute monarch of this country. Now you say, well, that's a very broad statement to make, but let me show what happened while you were I don't want to wear that out. Let me show you what happened while we were all asleep. I'm including myself with you. We were all asleep. What happened? World War I broke out in the summer of 1914. 1914 was the year in which World War I broke out. There are a few people here my age who remember that. Now that war was waged on one side by Great Britain, France, and Russia, and on the other side by Germany, Austria-Hungary, and Turkey. What happened? Within two years, Germany had won that war. Not alone won it nominally, but won it actually. The German submarines, which were a surprise to the world, had swept all the convoys from the Atlantic Ocean, and Great Britain stood there without ammunition for her soldiers, stood there with one week's food supply facing her, and after that, starvation. At that time, the French army had mutinied. They lost 600,000 of the flower of the French youth in the defense of their done on the Somme. The Russian army was defecting. They were picking up their toys and going home. They didn't want to play war anymore. They didn't like the Tsar. And the Italian army had collapsed. Now, Germany, not a shot had been fired on...